it's, uh, it's 17 years old. Uh, it's been through its up and down. And just the lead-in narrative that you had just now is what was wrong with the, what was uh, the problem around the company, the narrative. There was so much noise around the company uh, underneath the covers, which we saw today in the Analyst Day and also in the S1 that they put out, and we know for a long time. This is a solid company with a great product that's really come together in the last two, three years with the Foundry product. The revenue engine is fired up with the Foundry product. So now the installation is faster, the revenues are moving faster. So things are, they're coming together. Uh, it's a uh, nice uh, grounding in the defense and intelligence communities. They've gathered a lot of data, good analytics in real time. That's what the companies, the enterprises and the government needs. So this is in the right place. There's a lot of noise around the company, uh, like you just heard, uh, needs to clear out. When they come out and they report some uh, quarters, you'll see that this is a good, solid company. So if the company's in the right place uh, business-wise, what, what about if the IPO or, or, or public uh, becoming public is in the right moment uh, with the way that the market and the NASDAQ is at the moment? Do you think there's a risk that this gets, uh, gets shelved or undervalued because of the market volatility? Yeah, uh, I think the market's okay at this point, and I... I mean, like listening to the experts, that it should be okay. I mean, there's going to be some turbulence. It was uh, extended for a while, but I don't think it's really fallen off the cliff yet. So, and they're going to come out in a few weeks. So that's fine. I and mean, they'll be okay. And direct listing is the right way to go uh, because of the noise, like I said, around the company. Uh, it needs to just come in there and then just uh, prove themselves from there. Just hope uh, with the IPO and other unicorns and the expectations get ahead of the whole companies. In this case, they can manage it much better with a direct listing and then prove themselves. I feel like one of the biggest investor questions, Santosh, certainly around the financials, is the overdependence on government contracts. While it makes up a little more than half of its business, it did grow faster than non-government business lately, but it can be very lumpy, as you know, and I'm not sure that, that that's necessarily a growth story. What do you say to those, to those questioning that? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, uh, that oscillates. I mean, uh, last year it was more enterprise, uh, less government. This year it's... Uh, so that, that balance kind of tilts uh, up and down. But these are long-term contracts. The, the, with the ICE, it's seven years. Army, it's six years. So these are long-term contracts, renewable, and they're so well entrenched within these companies. And that's the beauty of this company. This, the, the, the high level of stickiness, the switching costs are high, uh, there's a lot of loyalty. They have a narrow user base, which they are trying to grow, as uh, like they said. Uh, but uh, it's a high level of stickiness, and uh, the revenue per customer is high. So they have. They don't need a lot of customers, but they need good, uh, deep customers. I mean, who spend on their products, and that's what's happening. You're seeing that, and as you see, they're inflicting to. The, the financials are improving. The first half of 2020 was very good. If they can maintain that, the 49% growth that we saw in the first half, uh, which is very likely, depending on the looking at the backlog that they have, uh, the pipeline that they have, I think they're on the right track. So let's hope that they deliver, which we think they will, but they have to do it. And we know how the IPOs have been punished if they miss their numbers, these high growth companies. So rather be conservative, get out there and then prove themselves.